Well, I'm going to talk about something that happened this morning that is going to pale in comparison to the images that you'll see soon about the roof ornament install. But that's what we celebrated this morning. And uh, I'd like to talk about a number of people who are involved in this. I mean, that it's a huge dependent arising, this whole roof ornament topic. But there's a number of people here who deserve to be recognized in this talk. So um, we started off this morning, the crane arrived early. Apparently it was a small crane. In my view, it looked like a big crane. And the wind was going at a pretty good clip. It's even windier now. But even the crane operator was a little bit concerned about hoisting these ornaments up with the given wind direction and all of that. So we started chanting Tara's mantra, and that went on for quite some time. And then I think it shifted to something else? Or was it just Tara's? Almost 21 Tara's. That kept going for some time. Yeah. And how do you talk about something so monumental as this? Um, so they decided that they would start with the largest roof ornament first. There's three Ganjiras there, they're spire looking things, and they represent the five Buddha families. So they decided they'd put the big one up first, and the crane, they, um, John Hauser and Jason, who are from Young Construction, they get a big round of applause for their planning and preparation and doing everything very safely. So they had to take apart part of Ganjira because the cage that they were having it transported on wasn't tall enough. So they took it up and it went up, no problem, and they got it onto this metal base, and then they um, attached the other parts of the Ganjira. And then, to my horror, I saw the crane operator starting to close down his huge rig, and I thought, oh great, they've stopped the process, it's too windy, they're going to go home and we have to do this another day. But then I learned um, that young construction people thought that, or they determined that they could do the rest of the install just using this very large genie machine, which they did. So the crane people went away, and the install continued. There's another video that was made last year featuring Venerable Damcha that you need to watch, and you'll put this link in the description of the talk where she talks about what these images mean. But just very briefly, um, when the Buddha attained awakening, he wasn't too sure if he should, you know, share what he had learned and to teach. And the story that was um, relayed in this other video is that Brahma, the Lord of the Gods, went to the Buddha and, you know, pleaded with him, made these very heartfelt requests, and offered a thousand spoked Dharma wheel so that he would please share the Dharma for the benefit of all living beings. And then at that point, apparently, two deer came out from the forest to hear his first teaching, and the deer, male and female, represent all of us uh, sentient beings. So the deer and the Dharma wheel, you'll see they're situated on top of the entrance to the Buddha hall. They're right at the top of the parapet. And the Ganjira are right at the top. So one thing that Venerable Damcho mentioned in her video last year was that we had organized the painting of these roof ornaments with a, a company in Spokane. But all of that fell apart, as things do in samsara. So then we were returning to the search for an automotive paint shop to paint these roof ornaments. Now imagine this for a minute. You're in rural northeast Washington state, or even Spokane, and you go into an automotive shop wearing maroon robes, and you have a shaved head and then you pull out pictures of copper roof ornaments that you'd like to have painted. And typically the response that we got was, um, we're too busy. So that's code for, um, I don't think that's something that we really wanna do. So we continued the search into Sand Point and we encountered an automotive shop owner who looked at the things with interest and he too said, we're too busy. But he said, you know what? I know this fellow in Priest River. He's a fantastic painter. He paints anything. He paints motorcycles. You name it. He's done it. I'll bet he'll do this for you. So we weren't too optimistic about this, but we went to his shop right away. 
And we, we went in, and he was very interested in it. And he said, you know, I really don't know if I can do it for you. I'll have to see one of these pieces in person. So when they arrive, just bring one over. So when the, um, the roof ornaments, which were, I'll go back a bit, these roof ornaments were made by hand in Kathmandu by Mr. BJ's um, company of artisans, helped by his father. And these copper things were then shipped to the United States and sent to Sean's warehouse. And we grabbed the Dharma wheel, which we thought was the most complicated uh, piece to show him. Venerable Children later told me we should have given him the most simple object to look at first because he might have been put off by that, but he was very intrigued by it. And there's, it's so complex. You'll, there's thousands of minutes of video that you'll see. I don't know how the video team is going to select what to choose, but you'll see these in, in uh, close detail. And so he took up the challenge. And he did these pieces over the course of about two and a half months. We were shuttling roof ornaments from Spokane Valley to Priest River and eventually to the barn at the Abbey, where they sat from November until today. And uh, so in addition to those people that I've mentioned, um, of course, the structural engineer for this Buddha Hall had to be involved to figure out how these things get attached to the roof you know, safely. And it also involved our architect, Tim, Tim Wilson. And I thought the biggest concern would be perhaps the wind with these roof ornaments. But the structural engineer said, no, he was more concerned about earthquakes. So fortunately, we're not in a place yet that has earthquakes. But as we know, this kind of situation can change. Believe me, they're on there very firmly. So I don't think we have anything to worry about. But it is samsara, so we'll see. Um, did I say the name of the automotive painter? Oh, OK. So his name is Brian Neville. And the name of his shop in Priest River is the Automotive Collision Shop. So I highly recommend him if you need car repairs, <laughs> any paint work. He is fantastic. And his team is absolutely fantastic, very easy to work with. And so all of this, of course, going back to Dependent Arising, goes back to the fact that, you know, had Venerable Children not seen a flyer in 1975 advertising two lamas coming to California to teach the Dharma, had she not seen that flyer, the person just didn't put it up in that bookshop, none of this would have happened. I don't think it would have. So we're very grateful to that person and to Venerable Children, who was very curious and wanted to go and did go, and then she went and uprooted her whole life and went to India and Nepal. And the rest, as they say, is history. So there's, there's so many people involved in this. Um, some of the images that you'll eventually see were filmed by a company called North Fork Land, Land Works. And their, Matt, their owner, Matt Seaton, became a good friend of ours while they were building retaining walls last year. And he sent two of his employees over this morning to film this with a drone at no charge, just because he thinks that this is a very important event for people in the world to see. So that was very kind of him. Uh, what else? Let's see. Oh, and then everyone had dispersed. I was talking at the end with Tim Wilson. And he said, you know, I just wish the sun would come out right now. Because I just noticed a few minutes ago how those ornaments looked in the sun and they were gleaming. And we parted ways and I said bye bye and I went up to talk to the people filming with the drone and then the sun came out. And these images are spectacular. They captured it with the drone. I didn't know that Tim hadn't left. He was still around. He was taking pictures. And you'll see, it's just a, a stunning sight. So it's the crowning of the Buddha Hall. Soon the Buddha Hall will be completed, and we can tell you to come and practice the Dharma with us. And I think you'll be very taken by these roof ornaments that will lead you into the main entrance of the Buddha Hall, and then we'll hear the teachings. And let's transform our minds like as soon as possible for the benefit of all. Thank you, Venerable Children.